This is a video about the Dorsen Scholars Program, but to tell our story, I actually have to go back about 30 years. Back to 1992, when my mother, Sonia Scott, founded Dorsen, her passion project. As an immigrant, first-generation college student who grew up low-income, my mom was on an unrelenting mission to provide opportunities, mentorship, and a safe haven for youth from the inner cities of Essex County, New Jersey. For nearly three decades, Dorsen offered a wide spectrum of programs for youth in the local community. Financial literacy classes, a free computer lab, career development classes, free SAT prep classes, dance classes, scholarships to summer programs. You name it, my mom figured out a way to offer it. And all of this was done with virtually no budget, no staff, just my mom and whoever she can get to help her. Now, where was I the entire time? Right there by her side. First as a student in pretty much all of Dorson's programs over the years, then as a mentor to some of our high school students and a class instructor, and now as Dorson's first ever executive director. In July of 2019, I resigned from my job at Columbia University to step into this role, and I envisioned a new era of Dorson. We'd move with more intention, we'd operate with more structure, and provide a cohesive, high quality, high impact program. That brings me to the Dorson Scholars Program. A massively ambitious step in a brand new direction for Dorson. The Dorson Scholars Program is a tuition-free, supplementary college and career readiness and self-development program designed to enrich and develop the next generation of leaders and change agents from underserved communities. We received 65 applications for our inaugural cohort of just 20 students, which immediately exposed the dire need and thirst for a program like this in Essex County, New Jersey. We launched in November 2019, and the program was going great. Our scholars were meeting twice a week, every other week, for college readiness and career development classes, getting the skills, knowledge, resources they need to prepare for post-secondary education and make informed career goals. I blossomed into this like whole new person. We all want the same thing, but you come from completely different environments. It's like, oh, that's this is pretty cool. Like, I like this. It was also really fun connecting with everyone. The most memorable moment from an in in-person Dorsen was our uh, networking event. One of my favorite classes was the one when we were working on like the roller coasters. We found common interests and we just made a whole bunch of friends and it was a great experience. We brought in guest speakers from around the local community to speak about their educational and career journeys and allow our scholars to begin building their own professional networks. Our scholars engaged in community give back projects deeply rooted in their hometowns as civic engagement is one of our program's core pillars on their path to becoming active agents of change in their local communities. Our scholars are forming bonds with each other, we're building this community of support, and this vision of a program is coming to light, and then COVID hits. And everything about life as we knew it changed. The deadly coronavirus officially hitting the U.S. This is truly an unprecedented situation. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. At first I was like shocked because I didn't think that the virus would be so serious and would have to like stop like in-person schooling it was it was kind of a crazy transition for me like it was just it was just so fast i couldn't even i couldn't even react to it to be honest with you last year we had just gotten into high school but then when we're at home and we're doing online school there's a whole different set of rules for that i miss like interacting with my friends at school and like all the like projects we used to have i haven't bounce the basketball and like god knows how long hey i just miss being around my friends you know like joking around and having fun in school and stuff and it's a lot harder to learn on your own i was hoping that the class would continue i thought dorson would fall apart i honestly thought it would fall apart and we wouldn't be part of the program anymore okay let me see if i can do it now tip your camera down again Overnight, like every other institution around the country, we went virtual. We immediately reached out to our scholars and parents to find out what devices they had at home, and then spent hours on this thing called Zoom just to try to figure out how we were gonna do this. We only had a couple days before our next class, and it felt really important that we didn't miss a beat with our scholars. I remember feeling a little unsure, um, but wanting to accomplish this goal of making sure that the students got what they needed and that this assignment, this class 
was um, conducted and that they didn't have a break just because the world made this abrupt change. So welcome to Dorsen Scholars Program online. <laughs> we are still here, life must go on. Um, we all made a commitment to this program and fortunately due to technology, the show must and can go on. I was happy that the program would be continuing. I was happy that we managed to like, uh, move over to remote learning. Actually, like, in comfortable clothing, in my bed learning, I had a notebook out, my computer out, and I was like in the most com comfortable like position, that way to learn ever in my life. Now, diving into the virtual world definitely had its challenges. No, I, I'm just having a little challenge hearing you. Is that what uh, you said? Uh, can you hear me, Jonathan? You're still muted. Um, you said that you're a special agent. I want to know. I guess one of my biggest challenges would be uh, staying motivated to do work. Virtual learning, it's more difficult to get your point across. When we are asked to like, answer a question, but we don't really realize that someone else is going to answer it. So. We both talk at the same time and it's just that awkward moment when we're just, who's gonna go first? Suddenly students are home all day. They're isolated from their friends and classmates. Virtual school is a brand new frontier. There's a terrifying health crisis right outside their front doors. Some of their parents are losing their jobs. I mean, their entire world basically gets turned upside down overnight. So it was really important for us to try to encourage our scholars to stay connected but then also distract them with a little bit of fun. Fantastic Four, Jazeera, what do you guys have? Got nothing. Ooh, nothing. We said Spike Lee, and we don't have it. It's definitely not Spike Lee, it was just a guess. Outside of classes, we hosted a really fun trivia night the scholars had a blast with. We also threw together a book club, hosted other game nights, and movie discussion nights. I read Let the Sky Fall, which was my pick. A movie discussion. I watched uh, The Social Network. I feel like book club was just like a very great experience. And it was pretty interesting talking to other people about the movie and seeing what their reactions were. We instituted group advising. Our scholars met in groups of three with an assigned Dorsen board member for bi-weekly check-ins, which gave them the opportunity to stay connected outside of class and talk about how they're feeling. Pretty early on, we also began to discover unexpected benefits of operating virtually. One positive definitely we, we get to like invite more people over who would otherwise not be able to like come on. Instead of like having to run to a new building and different things like that, it's just a lot easier to actually be here and be present for this. We were able to bring in guest speakers from around the country, not just locally for our career development course. We took the students on a virtual tour of Columbia University. We hosted an alumni panel with Thorson alums. We realized there's actually a lot that we could do in the virtual world. I mean, we worked hard to pull this thing off. Pulling together a virtual program overnight with no understanding of what the future would hold was not easy. And it took a team of amazing volunteers to stitch this thing together. We all committed even more of our time and effort to make sure our scholars felt supported through probably the most difficult school year of their lives. So we made it through the school year, we made it to June, but we knew we had a lot of work to do over the summer. My goal was to make sure that the scholars were supported as we knew that we'd be expecting 100% virtual in the upcoming school year. We standardized our curriculum templates for a cleaner look. We built out an online scholars portal in an attempt to create a one-stop shop with everything our scholars would possibly need for the program. We transitioned all communications to Slack, a popular email substitute, in order to more efficiently run program communications and familiarize our scholars with a platform currently used by professionals in the workplace. The scholars portal is really easy to navigate. We get to like look over our notes of what happened last class or like look at the, the calendar. Slack and Notion, I thought they were pretty good because we got to like communicate with, with the other scholars. I just wanted the scholars to feel supported 
uh, and know that we would do whatever we needed to to adjust to to the unknown. Our resume writing class was definitely the most memorable. Like learning about networking with other people and how important that is in the real world. Uh, public speaking, a uh, virtual environment. I kind of feel like those classes um, virtually actually kind of help us, you know, interact better. To continue supporting our scholars' emotional health and wellness, we made group advising a permanent component of the program and roped in some male advisors to support our young men. I decided to become an advisor in the Dorset Scholar program this year uh, because I truly identify uh, with the people, the culture, and uh, the mission. We also embedded mindfulness practices into our classes and really prioritized our scholars as individuals first and foremost. At the top of every class, we start with a gratitude exercise and promote the power of gratitude and the importance of self-care in building a healthier and more positive mindset. My mom brought like snacks and drinks for like the people who deliver our packages and the mailmen. I was I was happy because I got to see like how people felt excited. Like it made me think like what I'm grateful for what I have now. I uh, became like more positive, I guess, around my friends. Journaling like once a week during like Dorsen really helped me boost my positivity about everything going on right now. 2020 was a rough year. COVID was one thing, but our scholars also witnessed a country reconciling with racial injustice. Young people from underserved inner city communities were hit hardest by the educational inequities the pandemic and remote learning only exacerbated. And on top of that, faced the emotional toll of fighting for social justice. There's finally a spotlight on protecting and uplifting vulnerable populations. And so now is the time more than ever that we must support these young people, highly motivated young people with great potential. My name is Alex and I'm an aspiring developer. My name is Jazira and I've written 20 plus novels. My name is Jonathan and I love game design and graphic design. I'm Tamira and I aspire to be the change that I wish to see in the world. My mother's mission was to provide a safe supportive space for local youth to work towards a future filled with college and career possibilities. For almost 30 years at Dorson, we've remained steadfast towards that mission. With a tiny budget and a small team of volunteers, we've established some awesome partnerships. We've watched our students have life-changing experiences. We've watched our students go off to college and beyond. I mean, we've truly made a lasting impact in the community. The passion and commitment that goes into uh, the vision that Sonia set more than 25 years ago. So this is not a fly-by-night thing. This is a, a quarter of a century uh, uh, at work, making an impact in our communities, in the lives of our students. COVID has impacted education, the workforce, and the workplace tremendously. The landscape of higher ed is changing. The jobs of tomorrow are looking very different than the jobs of today. We are essentially challenged with preparing our students for a future that is changing rapidly every single day, while still providing access to the guidance, knowledge, and social capital that they need to get a leg up in life. At Dorset, our goal is to develop our students into self-actualized individuals with maximized post-secondary and career possibilities. But it takes far more than just SAT prep and college advising. It takes nurturing a strong sense of self and a pride in one's community if we are to develop the future leaders this country needs. But this work isn't easy. It's a hustle. It takes more than a village. It takes money, it takes resources, it takes partnerships, it takes a selfless commitment. It's a grind, but there's nothing worse than untapped potential. And we're doing all that we can to make sure Dorson is an incubator of potential because these students' dreams deserve to be realized. Our vision at Dorson is to expand our reach and serve more students through the Dorson Scholars Program. We believe it is imperative to invest in the potential of young people from underserved communities, and it's about time we level the playing field. Join us in bringing our vision to life.